Yes, Mr. Hussey here, sixth grade math. Um, I'm here for your lesson for Tuesday. Okay, this is Tuesday's lesson. Um, Monday, you might be able to catch up on some work if you're missing anything. Um, but this is Tuesday's math lesson. We're going to go over our test question by question. And your job is to, on separate paper, fix all the mistakes you personally made. So if you didn't make any mistakes, then you'll have nothing to do today. However, if you made two mistakes, then you'll need to show me what you did wrong and explain to me what you did wrong in a sentence, okay, showing the steps I showed. Um, just want to encourage you guys to, my encouragement for you today is would you take this challenge? Would you find one thing in your life that you need help with and find a Bible verses that a Bible verse that matches to that one thing? And then write it down and keep it with you today to use as like a weapon when that thing comes up in your life. For instance, um, sometimes I get afraid. So a verse that helps me that I just found last week is Colossians 2.10. And it says, he is the head over every power and authority. And the he's referring to God. So what that tells me is every time I feel afraid, I pull that out. I say, wait. God's the head over every power and authority. God's in charge. God's in, more powerful than the enemy, more powerful than Satan. He's more powerful than evil. He's more powerful than wrong. So that really helps me when I feel afraid to pull out that verse that he is the head over every power and authority. Maybe some of you guys are dealing with anger. You could pull out a verse that says, be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry and keep that verse with you, like in your pocket, write it down on an index card, pull it out on a pocket. So the enemy can't make you think the verse isn't in the Bible because you say, yes, it is in the Bible because I have it right here. And you pull it out and you look at it. And that's why it's important to write down your references carefully, write down your words carefully when you copy down the words from the Bible to give it respect and honor and to show that it's really in there. Okay. Um, Maybe some of you guys are dealing with, you get annoyed quick, right? There's actually a verse that says, a fool shows his annoyance at once. I've That verse has been good for me for these last couple of years. I just found that recently, and that's really helped me to show that you can't always be getting annoyed all the time. And if you are, don't show it and ask God for help. So whatever situation you have, I encourage you today to find one verse in the Bible that speaks to that situation and carry that verse around with you. Literally put it on an index card or a piece of paper and carry it around in your pocket. And then when you encounter that situation, pull out that verse and use it as a weapon to fight that situation. Okay, so here we go. We are on um, the unit test. Okay, number one, which expression below does not represent 343? All right, so let's start working on some of these. Seven to the third. Well, I know that this will be seven times seven times seven. So these two are probably 343 because it wouldn't be two answers. So they're probably both 343. So let's look at this one. Seven times 49. Well, I know that seven times seven is 49. So maybe 49 times seven. Maybe this is the same as the first three. So let's key on this one. And let's just see if we're right. 9 times 9 is 81. Okay, so we multiply these two 9s times each other. And then times 9 more is 729. So 729 is not 343. So our answer is D. Number 2. Simplify. I think the thing that messed some of you guys up was this word simplify, but it just means to distribute in this case. So we have 36y plus 12x. Okay, some of you guys did 36y plus 12. You forgot to put that x. Okay. Number three. This is a PEMDAS problem. So parentheses, there are some parentheses here. So 9 divided by 3, we'll copy everything down. Okay. Now on our next step, parentheses, there's none. It appears to be, but, we have, but there's nothing you can do inside there. So we're going to go to exponents. So 3 squared. Some of you guys put 6. Remember, 3 squared means 3 times 3. Or in this case, 9. 
So we'll write down our nine. Okay, so some of you guys like, I like to keep that in parentheses, but it still means minus here. So at this stage, we have a minus. That's not multiplication because there's like a symbol in between. If there was no minus sign, like if it looked like that, then it would be multiply. But since there's a minus sign, it means minus. So we have a minus and a plus. Okay, a lot of people will add first because they think Aunt Sally. But remember, addition, subtraction are tied. So when there's a tie, we move left to right. All right, so in this case, we would have 51. Because 60 minus 9 is 51. And then 51 plus our 15 would be 66. And so we're going to go with answer A. Okay. That's our answer for number two. I'll circle that. You could probably should have put it there. Um, 66 for three. Okay, number four. Which set of expressions does not represent equivalent? So equivalent means equal. Okay. So which are not equal? Well, this one here means eight times three X plus eight times seven. So that's correct. This one here means 24x plus 21. Or you could say three, like if it was set up like the first one, you could say three times 8x plus three times seven. So no matter which way you slice it, it's not 11x plus 10. So this one's gonna be B. Okay, just to show you like why C is correct, seven times three X is right there, plus seven times eight is right there. And then this one here just does it out. So that one's like 21 X, right? Plus three times eight is 24. So the answer number four is B and that's why. All right, number five is another PEMDAS problem. So we'll plug in our numbers first. Okay, we'll go All right, parentheses, there are none, exponents, so we got to do this first. So I'm just going to come up here. This will be 49 minus 7 times 3. Okay, because 7 squared is 7 times 7, right? Next stage, um, there's no more exponents, so multiply, divide. This is a divided by 4, but before you can divide the whole thing by 4, you got to get like a number up here to divide it by 4 to get a number two divide by four. So first we have to handle like the top here, okay? And we talked about that a couple times in class verbally. So hopefully you remember that. Although I think some people got confused there. So multiply divide from left to right. So in this case, we have seven times three. So we're gonna recopy a 49 minus seven times three, which is 21. Okay, and even though this says divide by four, our next step, we have to get a number up here before we can divide it by four. So our next step would be 49 minus 21, which is 28 over four, which is seven. So our answer for this one is seven. Okay, number six, which operation is performed in the second step? of the problem below, all right? So the first step, there's no parentheses, right? So the first step will be exponents. So we would have 49 minus nine over three plus two. Okay, now from here, before you can divide, you gotta get it like the last problem, you gotta get a number up here and a number down there. So which do we have to do first? Well, we have a subtraction and an addition. Aunt Sally, right? So most some people go to addition because they think Aunt Sally, but it's Aunt Sally. So they're tied. So you got to move left to right, or in this case, top to bottom. Okay, so the second is going to be subtract because the second step, our first step was this. So our second step, our next step is going to be that subtraction. And they didn't even try to confuse you. They didn't even try to put a choice as addition. So that's good. Okay. Match the following equations to the properties. Okay. So in this one, 
number seven, we have 12, eight, and five, 12, eight, and five, it's all plus. And what we changed was we changed the grouping. Okay. And we're dealing with plus symbols or addition symbols. So the one that deals with grouping is associative. So it's got to be one of these associative properties. In this case, it's the associative of not of multiplication, but the associative of addition. So that's A. Yeah. So that's the part I really hoped you went back to your notes to help you on that part of the test. And way to go, way to put in that work if you did. Okay, way to keep your notes organized, not throw them away, keep them in your notebook and have the discipline to go back and look at your notes if you did. If you didn't, don't feel bad about it. Just, you know, next time make that adjustment, keep your notes and go back to them. All right. Number eight, we have 16 times five times two. And then we have the same numbers, but they're in a different order. So this one, I had you star some words when we did this lesson. And one of the words I had you star was order. Okay. When you change the order, that's the commutative property. Okay, so it's got to be one of these commutative properties. It's got to be either C or D. In this case, since we're multiplying, it's going to be the commutative property of multiplication. So that one's going to be D. And that's how you show your work. You say, Mr. Assey, how do I show my work? Well, you show your work through, you know, making some kind of little note to say what you're doing. Okay, this one here, you have something times nothing equals nothing. Okay. So that it does not keep its identity. If it kept its identity, it would still be Y, okay? So it's not identity, it's the zero product property, okay? The zero product, because product, what does the word product mean? Product means multiply. So it's another way of saying the multiplicative property of zero. All right, so that's what we call the multiplicative property of zero. Some people call it the zero product property. Okay, finally down here, we have six times three plus eight equals six times three plus six times eight. That's simply the distributive property because six times three gives you this part here plus six times eight gives you that part. That's probably the most important property you're gonna, they're all important, but that one's gonna come up a lot. So that's called the distributive property. Yeah. All right, number 11, write the following expanded form in exponent form. So we have one, two, we have nine squared times six to the fourth. If you put six to the fourth in front, I gave it to you correct for that answer too. So you could have put six to the fourth times nine squared. We went over one of those just like that in the practice, the four minute practice for our test on the video. Number 12, which expression below is equivalent? Remember, equivalent means equal to three parentheses, three A plus four B. Okay, so this is once again, the distributive property. Like I said, there's like four or five of these on your test, so it's a lot. So obviously, like I have an eye for this because I've already done this, I've taught this, I went through seventh and eighth grade where you do this stuff, ninth grade where you do this stuff. So. Maybe it's an unfair advantage for me, but I can see that and just see, okay, that's the distributive property, okay? If you're struggling with that, then take a look. Here's what you do. Three times three A is nine A. Then you bring down your plus and three times four B is 12 B, okay? So our answer is gonna be D. So you distribute, right? You distribute. If you play basketball and you're a good distributor, that means you pass the ball well. If you distribute things to the poor, you pass out those things to the poor, those goods, the, the food, the money, right? So distribute, you like pass this one into this one, and then this one into this one. That's how I think of it, okay? On the back, number 13, translate the following verbal expression into an algebraic expression, okay? Three times the sum of a number, so let's just stop there, okay? That would be 3n three times the sum of a number and seven. So actually, let's relook at this. I got too jumpy and tried to finish that too quickly, okay? So what's the sum of a number and seven? That would be N plus seven. 
So three times that, right? Three times that thing is three times that thing, which is the sum of a number and seven. So three times that thing, three times the sum of a number, here's the number, and seven, sum means add, right? All divided by four. So all of that divided by four, okay? So you could say sum means add, you can show this arrow, you can say, Got to show some kind of work like that to show me what you're. Thank you. Now, if you did this three times n plus seven over four, you're actually incorrect. Well, let's see. No, you're incorrect because the multiplication would come first and then it would negate what these words are saying. So it's saying three times that thing. So that thing has to happen first, three times that thing. Now, if you did put this, obviously you'd get less points off, okay? But th that's the answer we're looking for. Three times the sum of a number in seven, all of it, all divided by four, okay? Which two expressions are equivalent, number 14? Which two expressions are equivalent? So this one would be seven times three, plus seven times X. So it's not that one. Because if I go like this, seven times three, it could look like that front part. That could be true. But seven times the X, that could not be true. So it's not A, All right? B, seven plus three plus X and seven plus three plus X. Okay, I think it's this one, but let's wait. Let's come back to that. This one here says seven times X times three. Okay. And seven times X. Let's see what, what this would give us. This would give us seven times X plus seven times three. So those are slightly different because here you have seven times X times three. And here you have seven times X plus seven. So this is different. This portion of it is different. So it can't be C. And D, these properties don't work like this for subtraction and division. And I alluded to that um, very briefly on the notes, but let's look at why. If you have something like, like seven plus three, that does equal seven, three plus seven, okay? And if I have something like seven times eight, that does equal eight times seven. Okay, they're both 56. But if I have something like 16 divided by two, that does not equal, and this is a not equal sign, that does not equal two divided by 16. Okay, same with subtraction. 16 minus 2 is 14, right? But 2 minus 16 is negative 14. So as soon as you're dealing with division and subtraction, they don't work like these properties on the front. That's why all the properties deal with addition and multiplication, right? There's no subtraction or division properties, at least that I know of. You might reach some in high school, but at least that I know of now, there's no addition there's no subtraction multiplication properties. Okay, they're all addition, subtraction, division. They're all addition multiplication properties. So if you look over here, these are not gonna be equal because when you reverse things around like that, this will give you eight, but that would give you one eighth. Okay, so we're gonna come back to this and I wanna see why we're choosing this. All right, we're choosing this because in this part over here, the seven plus three is parenthesized. Okay, so that would be like 10. And then in this side here, so over here, you would, since it's all addition, you would go left to right. So you're still getting that 10 before you add the X. So both cases, it's 10 plus X. Okay, and that's why it's B. All right, let's look at 15. Which of the following verbal descriptions best represents the expression below? Okay. Raymond pays 
Ramon probably pays $75 for car insurance and $10 for his ride sharing Metro card. Okay. That would just be like 75 bucks plus 10 bucks because they're both seem to be a one time fee. It says he pays 75 bucks for car insurance and 10 bucks for his ride sharing Metro card. We'll come back to that, but let me just, it just looks like it's this plus that. Okay. B, Gabby pays 75 bucks for her cell phone. And also that's so, so the and gives me the plus and ten dollars for each gigabyte of data. So this looks like it could be it because ten bucks times however many gigabytes she has, which I'll just make G for gigabytes. So if she has one gigabyte, she's gonna pay ten bucks. If she has two gigabytes of data, she'll pay twenty. If she has three, she'll pay thirty. So this price for gigabytes will change based on how many gigabytes she has. Let's look at C. So we think it's this one. C, Kendra pays 75 bucks for her cable bill and $10 to rent the cable box. It doesn't say like $10 per month. It doesn't say $10 per, it's just 10 bucks to rent the box. So once again, it's like this first one. Let's look at D. Mark pays 10 bucks for each streaming service he has and $75 for internet service. Okay, that looks like it could be close to it. Um, and that can be a little confusing, but that would be, even if it was the same, say for each streaming service he has. So if he has one streaming first service, it'd be 10. If he has two streaming services, it would be 20. That one would be in this direction. Okay, so we're going to go with this one because it's set up the exact same way as that. And it said it does say, to be fair to the problem, it does say best represents. So which one best represents? It would be this one that goes in the correct order and has that variable here. All right, number 16. Which expression is equivalent to 25 plus 8 times 9? All right, well, first we have to find out what 25 plus 8 times 9 is. So... First here, you would multiply. And then we can see that that's gonna give us an answer of 97. Okay, so this here gives us 97. So which one is equivalent or equal? Okay, equivalent means equal. We talked about that on your study guide or your four minute prep video. So hopefully you watched that or wrote that down for your test. Now, which of these is 97? Uh, all right, let's do some of this in our head. Okay. Well, we'd have to do our exponents first, right? So here we have a, a 9 and a 4 and a 25. And we'll copy down our symbols. Here we have, well, what's 3? Three? 3 times 3 is 9 times another 3. So that one's 27. Wow, five to the fifth is gonna be huge. That's gonna be some huge number. Like five times five is 25, right? Times another five is, we're already up to 125. We haven't even touched these things. So it can't be B, all right? Let's look at A, we got 25 plus two to the third is two times two, which is four times another two, which is eight. Oh, look at that. Three squared is three times three or nine. So it's gotta be A. The reason it's gotta be A is because look, look what we started with there, 25 plus eight times nine. And after one step here of doing the, what I did here was I did PEMDAS, so there was no parentheses. So then I knew I had to do exponents. My next thing would have still been an exponents. And my next thing would have still been an exponents before I had before I could do anything else. So you can see that 25 plus eight times nine is gonna produce 97. So that's your answer. All right, simplify. That just means like perform the order of operations. Okay, so in this case, so parentheses. So let's do that first. It's very good to be neat because when you're neat, you're less likely to get things wrong. So it is seven minus four, right? Our next step is exponents. So eight squared or eight times eight. Our next step is multiply and divide. 
there's no because there's no more exponents so we do have a multiplication you can look at it as if you look at it as six times three then you'll have to put your 18 here and drop down the minus sign if you look at it as negative six times three then you'll have to put negative 18 and you won't drop down a minus sign because you just handled that minus sign so either way you slice it you can get the same thing as long as you cover it up the way you want to so i'm going to look at it like this so six times three is 18. i'll drop my minus sign and then from this step we have subtraction addiction and addition i'm sorry you could get baited and go for the addition first if you're not careful. But remember, subtraction and addition are tied. So we move left to right. 64 minus 18. Well, I know 64 minus 20 would be 44. So I'm going to subtract 2 less than 20. So I have to be 2 higher. So that's 46. 46 plus 2 is 48. And that's your answer. Okay, number 18. Which term describes the number six in the expression below? Okay, six, if you look at that sheet, um, actually it's on the study guide, your test study guide sheet. This is what we call a coefficient. It's a coefficient is the number you times the var variable by. All right, so that's a coefficient. You'll hear that a lot in high school, eighth grade, the coefficient. Right. Number 19, which of the following has the same result as, okay? So if we followed the order of operations here, we would have to do the parentheses first. And then our next step will be the multiplication. All right, and then our answer for that problem will be 16. So we're looking for one of these where our answer is 16. All right, so let's just, I don't know, let's just guess. Let's look at D. We got, this will be 25. Oh, look at that, 25 plus 7 on the top. So that would be 32 over 2 is 16. And I didn't even, I just guessed D first, and we got lucky. All right, so your answer is D. Because that's 16 and that's 16. All right, number 20. Which of the following cannot be written as an equation? All right, an equation I noted on that four minute video has an equal sign. So that's what we're getting into next. That's our next topic. Um, so this says three times a number is 27. So that would be like three times a number is 27. That word is means equal. One half of a number plus four. That would be like half of a number plus four. See, the quotient of a number in 12 is five. So the quotient of a number in 12 is five. So that has the equal sign. And then six is two less than a number. So six is six equals two less than a number. So that's a little tricky to write that one um, because you got to really think of what it's saying. So six is, so six equals two less than a number. So not two minus N, but two less than that thing, right? So N minus two. So the only one that doesn't have an equal sign, which cannot be written as an equation, would be B because there's no equal sign in B, all right? All right, guys, that's it for, this is Tuesday. Test corrections, you're looking over your test, seeing where you made your mistakes and on separate paper, or I don't know, you wanna make your test corrections on your paper, if you have that hanging around. Um, say you did your test on, you printed this out, then do your test corrections in a different color, okay? And show me by sentence form, or at least like some kind of sentence fragment, what you did wrong. So I gotta see what you did wrong. Um, I prefer it on separate paper. But if you do it on this and it's clear and neat, that's fine too. Thanks, guys, for your time. God bless you.